Hey guys, my name is Becky and welcome back to our channel. On this channel, we explore all things DIY projects, design, home decor, show you how to make really amazing projects, all while trying our very best to provide you sustainable options for each step along the way. If that kind of stuff sounds fun and like your jam, then subscribe to this channel because I guarantee you will like our content. Before we get into it, I just wanna give a big thank you to Google for being today's sponsor. Let's get started. As for what we're doing today, I am going to try my very best to tackle two of my favorite home decor trends that I've been seeing absolutely everywhere. Figure out how I can make them using solely secondhand materials. The first project we're attempting is the checkered rug, and I feel like there's a way to DIY something that gets us somewhere close to this vibe because I, I just, I love it so much. The second project we're gonna take on is the glass mushroom lamp. I'm sure you've seen a photo like this somewhere. It's, again, absolutely everywhere. I love it so much, and I do feel like there's a clever DIY solve for this one as well but that's gonna come later, so you gotta watch the whole thing. <laughs> okay, so my plan of attack for this checkered rug is to combine two existing rugs together, a light one and a dark one, to make my checkered pattern. Now, there are so many secondhand rugs available out there. Either they're just not a style that's really trendy right now, or they've been well-loved. Now, of course, you could purchase new ones if you wanted to, but my goal today is to do it secondhand. I've already scoured the internet and actually found two shaggy rugs that I think are gonna be great options and both of them were under $30 each. My only word of advice for you is to just take a look at the photos and make sure that the shag of both rugs that you're thrifting feel like a similar length and scruffiness because when we combine them, we want it to feel like it's one main rug. So I think the ones I found have been really, really great options. So I need to go pick those up right now. I don't actually know exactly where I'm headed to, so I will get Google Maps loaded up for this trip. Google actually offers a lot of really cool features to help people on their sustainable journey. Two of them can actually be found right in the Maps app. Okay, let's go. So traveling by car is one of the more carbon intensive choices that people make on a daily basis, but Google Maps has the option now to suggest the most fuel efficient route for your trip if it's not already the fastest one. Google estimates that eco-friendly routing can avoid 1 million tons of carbon emissions per year. That's the equivalent of removing 200,000 cars from the road. Plus also this feature saves you money on gas, which is a huge bonus. So it seems like there are multiple ways I can get to all the pickup locations for these rugs, but I am gonna choose the most eco option for my trip today. In addition to helping people make more sustainable choices, Google is also working to be more sustainable at a company-wide level. So Google's actually been carbon neutral since 2007, meaning that they've been offsetting their carbon emissions that come from their campuses, but their aim is to go a step further and by 2030, their goal is to operate totally carbon-free every hour of every day. What this means is every email you send through Gmail, every question you ask Google search, every YouTube video you watch, and every route you take through Google Maps is gonna be supplied entirely by clean energy all of the time, which is amazing. If you'd like to learn even more about Google's sustainability efforts, you can access all that information at sustainability.google, and that will, of course, be linked below for easy access. I say it's time to head out. Okay, I am back. Rugs one and two are here. I ended up finding this cream one and this dark brown one, I think together it's going to make a beautiful pattern. So, the first step to making this checkered rug is going to be to disassemble these two rugs so we can put them back together to make one giant rug. They're actually pretty easy to take apart with an X-Acto knife, so my first step is gonna be marking out squares with a sharpie and a ruler you can make your squares whatever size you want just know that the smaller you go the more work it's inevitably going to be to put them back together in the end added benefit for making this pattern specifically is that whatever rug your rugs uh, started out with your final one can actually be double that size because you're using twice as many squares so you can start with a more affordable smaller rug and end up making something pretty big all right do you see this beautiful grid pattern that is starting to form. Let's cut it apart. This feels 
so wrong, but I am respectfully assuring the home decor gods that I will be putting this back together and rectifying this great offense. So the back of the rug is actually pretty easy to cut through. Um, just do be careful as there is a blade going through this that you don't cut yourself. Ta-da! One little fuzzy square complete. I went with a four inch by four inch square size for all of my pieces and now I have two really big piles of white squares and brown squares which we will use to build the checkered rug which we are on to that step now which is putting this guy back together. <laughs> I did a lot of watching different rug tutorial videos to find out what's the best way to finish a rug, what to put on the back of a rug, and I've come up with a two-step method. The first step is going to be pretty easy and low lift and it's essentially just using this product which is called rug seam tape. It's basically like sticky duct tape except for the front has a fabric-like texture which kind of mimics the backing of rugs, keeps it a little flexible, and it's as easy as that. I'm going to use this to tape every single piece of my rug back together in a checkered board pattern. I just think this might take some time, but I'm gonna get started and then I will fill you in on what part two of this backing process is gonna look like in a second. Oh my goodness. She's so cute already. The babyest little checkered rug is happening. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, I've moved outside because I just need more floor space to make this and also because my next step, now that my rug has been fully taped together in place, is to use this rug glue, which is gonna smell a little bit, so it's safer to do it outside. This seems to be a favorite among the rug making community. It's uh, Robert's 6700. I will link this below. And what I'm gonna do is use a putty knife and basically smear this all over the entire back of my rug. Heads up, this glue is super sticky, so watch your fingers. Now this glue is great if you're doing like a punch needle rug and you don't want your yarn to come out, but since my rug has already been made at one point, I'm just piecing it back together, I want to do a final step instead of solely relying on the glue to hold this together, and that is to use this material. This is called final backing fabric, and it's kind of like a thick woven material, but I think that any dense canvas material would also do this job just fine, but I will be linking this one below for you if you're curious. I'm going to be spreading this over my entire glued surface and pressing it into all of the seams to make sure that this material really gets into all my pieces and holds it together. Now the rug glue does take a full 24 hours to fully dry, so I'm gonna leave this alone to do its thing, and I will trim up the excess fabric later. <laughs> it's a trust the process moment right now, okay? <laughs> this might actually work. That glue seems to be really eating into that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thanks for your commentary on it. Is this recording? Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty cool. You want help? Yeah, actually, it's better if I just do it. Like okay. You're gonna get gluey and then blame me. <laughs> Bye. Love you. Love you, Ricky. Do not wear your nice clothes when you do this. I got glue on my knee. I feel like this is not gonna come out. What is this? I don't know. <laughs> all right, I pressed the glue into all of this. It's now fully soaking through. Gonna let this dry for a full 24 hours and see if it worked. All right, it is the next day. I think it's about time we start tackling that second DIY project I wanna do, which is the glass mushroom lamp. I'm aiming to make something that kind of looks like this style. I know there's a lot of similar retro glass shaped lamps, but this one in particular kind of has a bowl top and a cylindrical slimmer base. And I think that I've seen things at the thrift store that look close to these shapes. And that's where I'm gonna head today to pick up my materials to build this lamp. I actually wish that the thrift store was closer to me because the weather today is literally unreal. It's so warm. We're getting our first taste of spring and I really would love to take my bike out and get there, but I don't think that's in the cards for me, but I do have to paint today and we can do that outside. Yes. 
Speaking of biking, I actually just learned that in 2021, the use of bike directions on Google Maps has increased by up to 98% in cities around the world, which is amazing because it's making it clear that people really want to opt for the use of two-wheel transportation. Also, don't worry if you don't already own a bike, but you want to take out a bike because a lot of major cities now have bike sharing programs, which means you can just rent a bike and take it out for the day, which is great. If you'd like to learn more about the bike sharing features available in Google Maps, I'm going to leave a link to a really great blog post in the description below. All right, I say we head out to the thrift store. <laughs> This is good if I can get a taller vase, right? It's cute. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> like, if I did a square based mushroom lamp, this would be so easy. Yeah. But I don't think that's the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> you tried. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Let me show you what I picked up. Um, okay, you couldn't tell by my shopping clips. My plan here is to construct this lamp out of both a glass bowl and a glass vase, both of which are things that I feel like you could find it like any thrift store. So I think this is a really achievable DIY for you guys to create at home as well. So first up, glass mixing bowl, $9.99. A little steep if you ask me for a bowl, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> and then this vase, this nice tall vase, $4.99, much better. And the important thing to remember when you are shopping is to just keep the scale of things in mind. Place them together, see how it's looking, see if the size of your bowl is matching the size and height of your vase. I really like it. I really like it. <laughs> now, as for how we're gonna light it up, checked out the lighting section and found this which I think is some sort of pendant light, paper lantern light. I don't, how does this? <gasps> oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, I feel more gilded age than anyone at the Met Gala was. Thank you. I will take my uh, prize now. This is so funny. Anyways, I don't even need this part for the DIY. <laughs> the reason I picked up that light is because it came with the cord and bulb for the inside. And this is all I'm gonna use to light up the light. Good thing about just like a plug-in cord with a bulb is you can find this easily anywhere at the hardware store online, or in my case, you could thrift it. And this was $3.99 as well, so off to a very good start. And because my glass is clear, I'm going to paint it because I don't wanna be able to see the light on the inside. I am gonna go for a really funky retro orange color, but I think any color here would work well. I think a white would be really beautiful. But before we get to painting, I need to make sure I really clean this because I don't know if you can tell, but it's quite dusty and dirty. And this needs to be the cleanest piece of glass you've ever had in your life because we're gonna paint the inside and whatever isn't clean is going to show. So let's get to cleaning. Step two before we get to painting is, this is not tape, what? No. <laughs> Step two before we get to painting is taping off anything we don't want to get painty. So I'm actually gonna paint the inside of the glass. I think that's gonna be like really nice to keep the glassy finish on the outside. We'll make it look a little more professional. So I'm gonna tape off with some paper and some tape all of the outside of the glass so that that stays nice and clear. So spray painting glass can be a little bit tricky because the glass surface is so slippery that you can easily get drips. Now, because we're spray painting the inside of the glass, any drips are really gonna show. So it's important that we do not get a single drip at all. And the way to do that is by light 
coats, many, many light coats. This is gonna feel tedious and like it's taking forever, but honestly, it's going to be worth it to get that super opaque, smooth, clean finish with zero drips, guys. So do your lightest coat possible, let it dry, then do your next lightest coat possible and let it dry and continue until you've built up an even coat of color. I know it's gonna feel so tempting to just go heavy with the spray paint and get it done, but if you get a drip at all, it's gonna ruin it and there's no way to really clean that up. So go slow my friends because I promise you it will absolutely be worth it. Which speaking of, can I just show you now that it's all been unwrapped how beautiful of a finish this is? I don't think I've ever spray painted something so perfectly in my life. <laughs> it's it's great. So the bowl is done and as you can see, because we spray painted the inside, the outside still has this really nice glassy texture, which almost makes it look like it was orange glass instead of painted glass. And the vase is done as well. Okay, so now we're on to the final step, the most exciting step, which is lighting this up. So the game plan here is to suspend my thrifted light cord inside the vase and that will light up the middle and hopefully the top of the light as well. The absolute important thing to note here is that you're using an LED light bulb because these do not get very hot. See, look, I'm touching it. It's, it's not warm in the slightest. <laughs> and this is important because we don't want the heat of the bulb to affect the spray paint in any way. So you might be wondering how I'm going to get this in here. It's very simple. I'm going to be using this flexible uh, metal wire. You can get this from the craft store. I'm going to be crafting basically a little hook system for my cord so I can hang it off the side of the vase and it will just, it will just chill out inside there. I'm taking the wire and wrapping it around the base of the light and leaving two pieces to kind of create a V shape going from the base of the light upwards. You can then determine how deep into the vase you want the bulb to sit. And then you can just bend the ends of your little V-shaped wire to create two little hooks that can clip over the edge of the vase to suspend your light bulb perfectly in the middle. The vase is finished, the light has been placed inside, and we're on to the last step, which I think you can see where I'm going with this. The painted bowl now gets set on top. Oh my goodness. Even without this lit up yet, this is the most adorable thing I've ever made. I love how good the glass looks with the paint on the inside. This is such a great technique to try out. I am gonna go get this styled properly. We'll light it up and we can see how we did. This lamp is just everything that my 70s dreams are made of. I am so happy with the result on this one and it was surprisingly so easy. But I also haven't forgot about that amazing checkered rug we started earlier, so let's just jump back into that one. So now that my rug glue is completely dry, I have the rug back inside and it's time to do some final little touches on the back. I'm taking some scissors and cutting down any of that extra backing fabric. I left maybe about a half inch round so that I could use a hot glue gun to help roll in the edges. This is gonna stop them from fraying further down the road. <laughs> okay, it is finished. I'm sitting on it upside down because uh, th the suspense, okay? I'm gonna take it into the studio because I just think it's gonna look so good styled there. But I guess before we go, I can give you a little sneak peek because I know you're just dying to see if this turned out. Ready? Ah! Okay, that's it. That's all you get. Um, I will see you there. I had to have my little friend join me for the outro because
I had so much fun trying to recreate some of my favorite trends from thrift store items. If you want to see me do this again with some new trends, let me know your favorites below because I'm curious what you guys are loving right now. And before I leave you, I want to thank Google so much for being today's sponsor. And just to let you know, if you enjoy watching me upcycle stuff from the thrift store into cool trendy items, you can watch this video next because I think you'll like it as well. It will be linked in the cards and you can watch this short trailer right here. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. I'm so ready to make you a pillow. Listen guys, I was really trying to do something here and you guys will have to stay for the reveal to see if this turned out a hot mess or actually kind of cute.